7,723. So what is that? It's actually 7,723 miles of coastline in Britain. Beautiful coastline. And if you happen to live in Midwest America, it's unfortunate. You're going to have to get on a plane or do a day trip. I mean, I used to live there. I didn't see the Pacific Ocean until I was 20. But I'm lucky now to live in Britain, and I have coastline that's no more than, say, a half an hour away from me. Now, I've brought you to one of the most beautiful places in Britain for coasts, Felixstowe Docks. Not really, actually. Um, I can see the cranes from here. We're just up the coast. Not exactly the most beautiful place in Britain, but I'm trying to make a point. You don't have to have beautiful coastlines to get great images. So we've come out here to find some interesting features to show you how to get a nice image out of what you have at hand. So here we've got sea defenses behind me, as you can see. There's some beautiful green moss over here that's polarizing and bringing that saturated green out beautifully. Now, I've tried a couple of different compositions now, but I did a recce yesterday morning. It was actually by uh, reference to Skyfire. It's an app that's a plug-in to the Photographer's Ephemeris. Now, those of you that are not familiar with Photographer's Ephemeris, Google it. It's a fantastic app, very much like PhotoPills and a lot of the other apps, but they have this bolt-on called Skyfire, and we'll put the link in the uh, uh, underneath the video. Now we have trialed this in previous videos and it's failed miserably. But on this occasion, I've got to say, it really came home. It was perfect. Now this location is about an hour away from where I live. And I looked at the uh, tide levels were high tides, which are great, exactly what I wanted for this location. So I drove the hour down here, did a little look around here and see how the compositions were going to set up with the color in the background. I could see just a little hint of color happening on the dawn skyline behind me. And I thought, right, set up and waited, and the sky just erupted. It was fantastic. So what I wanted to achieve was this really ethereal look to the image by using a long exposure. So I was exposing like one minute, two minutes, something like that. So it's frequently the case these days when you think you're going to be alone, especially at dawn on a cold winter's morning. But uh, there was a local photographer that came along and snapped this picture of me at work. So thanks very much to Tom Scrivener for getting that shot of me for the video. I've seen a few comments on our channel and a few other videos out there about um, they're struggling with seascapes. So I thought we would do this video on how to master seascapes, what to look for. So what I'm looking for today and any time is color, shapes, curves, geometric shapes that really bring home a really strong image. So normally most people would rush out to their nearest beauty spot, but we specifically chose this location because around us you look around, there's a pile of rocks and sea defenses. So it's not uh, one of the most beautiful places, but we want to make sh we want to show you how to actually make a good image out of what you have. Okay, so let's get started. I want to take you through the stages of how I create an image. So in mastering seascapes is not necessarily thinking about the sea first, and in this case, it's actually secondary to the main subject. It's complementary uh, as the background to these sea defenses. So what I'm looking for here is color and design. So we've got these beautiful star-shaped um, sea defenses. It's, it seems strange to say beautiful sea defenses, but these are quite amazing. The patterns that these make sweeping out to the ocean, um, or the sea actually, it's the North Sea, sorry. We are in Britain, not an ocean. Um, so we're using these sweeping lines to guide your way out. And we've got that pole in the background that kind of stops the eye. So I'm using that as a compositional element within the frame. So now that I'm comfortable with the composition, I've got to think about the technique. What technique am I going to use to accomplish the end result? 
So in this case, I am coming really close down on this uh, sea defense right in the foreground. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a, a focus stack. So I focused on this initially and then focused right through the way at F8 to the very back um, part of the scene. So in that way, I'm able to increase the drama within the frame. So I'm including this really strong shape right in the foreground, which makes a really dynamic image. So you guys are always asking me what sort of settings I'm using. So let me talk you through this. So as I mentioned, I'm doing a focus stack. I'm using an aperture of F8. ISO is 64. I'm using a little stopper and uh, a grad just coming down onto the top of the horizon line. Now that gave me an exposure of 10 seconds. So that gives me a great way to, to smooth this water out in the background. Now with the focus stack on the D850, I can set this up. It'll go through and expose each 10 second um, exposure. Go to the next one, change focus. It does it all automatically. It's great. So it doesn't matter if you've got a short shutter speed with the focus stacking or a really long one. It'll actually do the whole series. So what that means is that I'm going to get these really strong um, shaped defenses here, but the sea behind it is going to be really soft and smooth. That's what I want to create, this contrast in those two elements. So at the end of this video, I'll show you some of the images that I've taken today and yesterday morning as well, that killer sunrise that I got and also a series of other seascapes that just illustrate different points that I'd like to try to make. Okay, so my advice for conquering seascapes is you've got to think about it in the sense of creating a mood. You're not just photographing the sea on a bright sunny day. You've got to think of it in the terms of mood, whether you're creating a really soft, peaceful uh, scene or something that's really dramatic, you know, with crashing waves or something like that. So, if you think of it in those terms, you'll actually start to create more dynamic images. Okay, so the more you think about mood, the more you'll actually slow down and start to think about the techniques that you need to carry out to create that mood. So I'm gonna tell you a few tips and key points that uh, you'll need to know about creating some great shots. Okay, so first point, this is like cooking. You've got all these ingredients, and it's bringing all those ingredients together to create something fantastic uh, to eat at the end of it. So in our case, we've got to think about the ingredients that we have. So it's the tide times. What sort of tide levels do you want for your particular shot? It's the shapes that you have to use, curves, design, color. Um, all of these things actually work together to create a dynamic image. Uh, filtration. Do you have, um, are you gonna use a long exposure to create a calm effect or a short exposure? So filtration, such as polarizing filter. Um, now in this case today, we had the sun at our shoulders, so that's great for polarizing. That really helps to bring out the strong green color here against the blue sky. Okay, so you've gotta think about elements like that and uh, how you wanna actually portray these. So each of these elements that I've mentioned are a skill in its own. So you might want to look back through our back catalog of videos to get more tips there. So I hope you'll enjoy the short slideshow at the end of this video. And this has inspired you to get out there and make some great seascape images. So now I'm off for a hot chocolate. But while I'm having that, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button. And thanks for those likes. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.